Alright, welcome back to the show. <clears throat> I realized last time I didn't do an intro, so uh, we're going to finish up working on these French Napoleonics that we started last week, and depending on how much time I have, I might base up some more. So what we've got here is some pretty plain looking bases, and we're going to dress them up tonight with some extra products. So, hmm, there we go. So, what I got here is just the grass and the figures, and I use this. This is why I let them dry overnight. Just bang that off, clear in the slot. And now there might be some grass and everything on them, so I usually reach over the trash can to give them a blow. And I give them a real good look with my lens, and if there's any extra hairs on them, I just use this soft brush. And, uh, check out but in this case they look pretty good and this is also where I check the figures to see if somehow I dinged them up and they look fantastic so I'm going to do that for all of these set them aside and then we'll start decorating them so it goes pretty quick and Just finished watching Aid Cook's stream. He's a uh, kind of he's a great painter. He does busts and Warhammer and a little bit of everything. And uh, he's a professional painter from the UK. And I just enjoyed watching the stream so much. And kind of thought maybe if it's that fun to watch, maybe it's that fun to do. So I'll give it a try. And take a look here. Yeah, those look beautiful. All right. So, as soon as I pull this base away, you'll be able to see the units as I'm working on them. I just want to get all this static grass back into the box. And. go that's all the big stands and then the elite stands and there we go grenadier for each and a light company for each which is kind of Snomer with the, the lights here because they're all lights. So these extra figures are kind of for fun. They would normally not have them. All right. Um, the static grass we're going to use later, but I won't. I'll wait to see if I get that far before I do that. So we'll just set that aside for now. And. Put these guys back on the table here. Let's see what we're working with. Okay. That looks good. All right. So the things I'm going to need for this are a pair of fat tweezers. I'm going to need a knife to push things around. I'm going to need a palette to put a little glue on. It's just an old base that didn't cut right on my laser. A piece of cardstock or anything would work. And I need to get the old glue off that glue ball. And here we go. Alright, so the tools I'm going to use today are the lead bearers tufts I showed last stream. Six millimeter dry grass. And that's a new box. I think I've got a box I'm working on. Uh, yeah, here we go. So here's here's a box I've used before. Oh, that's another one. 
I must have reorganized things and I shook them all around down here. So, there we go. Okay. So, these tufts, I'll hold off stream, but basically what I'm going to do is grab a tuft. And they have some adhesive on them. They have a little bit of sticky adhesive. And you can, uh, but I like to stick them in some glue. And uh, so I put usually one or two per base. In addition to that, depending on how many of these rocks are on the base, I might put uh, a few of those specifically in some place I think needs them. We'll be using some of our pre-made stones and some foliage tufts. So here we go. And just for fun, I'll use a toothpick to spread the glue out. So I'll have to use a lot of glue for these. The other two are pretty, pretty easy. So I take the tuft and on it goes. And I like to just give it a little push. You know, it has a little edge where it, you know, has some that silicone adhesive. Give it a push and done. In the back here, I've got these figures pretty close to the back. Uh, but I think this corner can use one of these right here. This is the side that the players see, so you know, as, you're, as you're commanding them, you're the closest player to it. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'll see if I can find a small one of these that I like. Often I use these rocks on bases that are for cavalry or officers or bigger. But these are young guards, so they're pretty important figures. And, We'll dress them up with little extra goodies. So, there we go. So he gets a rock. And I think he can probably dress that base up again because their guard will uh, put a little foliage cluster on it. So these soak up a lot of glue. And it's okay to oversaturate them because the, when the glue dries, it'll become invisible. So I'm going to stick this right there. And that's kind of a mess, which is why I have this. There we go. Believe it or not, that white gloppy mess, when it's done, will dry up nice and look just like a bush. So there we go. So we will I'm going to make a little room here for me to do the done pile. All right. Number one. And so that's the process. I'm just going to keep doing this and throw a few of these on the board here and not get to it. So the night I, I had the stream in 720 mode and I had the camera pretty close to the, where my light is and so I kept getting too close. So I'm going to do a short little stream of this basing here just to see if I can resolve those issues and make a better go of it. Uh, amazing what phones can do these days. This is actually just my cell phone that's the camera. And uh, does a pretty, pretty nice job. So there's a lot of rocks on this base. I don't think I need one of these. I think that I will be good the way it is. I'm gonna use a nice bright tuft here. And a little more glue. So this is a little different from your typical you know, Warhammer streams that are on Twitch. Historicals, you're doing a lot more figures. They're in units um, and they're in multi-figure units that move as a single uh, single unit often so you're not dealing with um, single bases but multi-figure bases and making those look nice and making them look like a cohesive unit is uh, it's part of the art, part of the fun. Uh, before we had these tufts, we would have to grab model railroad grass clumps uh, with tweezers and kind of push them in and glue them and trim them off later with some scissors. And it was kind of a process. Some people would use uh, little chunks of natural uh, fiber rope and uh, that worked nicely too for 28 millimeter scale. 
but again it was pretty time consuming all right so this one I don't want to be too regular so these two here both had um, both had tufts and foliage clusters this one had a rock this one didn't so this one here has a lot of these small little rocks and I think that that's fine. It's okay for some of the bases to be blank. So I'm going to leave that one just the way it is. Uh, and then these guys, the single stands, they're a lot, um, a lot smaller and they get handled a lot more in the game. And so I'm a little hesitant to uh, put a ton of decoration on them. And so we're going to just put one tuft on one of them. And uh, so I mean by it being sticky, it's got me and say the grenadier he's good uh, and on this one we'll put just one piece of uh, bush and that'll be good enough so there we go and so that's a unit that has been decorated and these guys would actually be on this end and so that's pretty good looking I'm happy with that and again close up of those last two figures that we did let's see here there we go you can see them nice and pretty good okay so that unit's done we'll put it to the back and we'll start on the next unit here So on the tabletop, that's how that unit would, would uh, be deployed. Sometimes it would be deployed like that, sometimes like this, sometimes like this. But mostly for Young Guard, it would just be the three bases. So, again, different than your typical fantasy or sci-fi game. So, here we go. This is a little repetitive. That's all the tips for it, so I'm just gonna, as uh, as they say, I'm just gonna get to it and pop them. So I'm trying to be a little unpredictable with these, not always the same. There's only so many options with three figures and five spaces around them but again I put all the all the clumps on one side of this base just for fun and there's a an okay rock we'll stick that in there and again I think I'll go with no bush on that one and this one I will go with I think like that that's a lot of glue but it'll still dry out fine put this right in between them and uh, no rock and two bushes on this one again I'm just kind of not trying to make it random I'm trying to make it not regular if that makes sense random is humans have a real hard time with random if you try to make it things random as a human you just can't they've proven that that's just the way it is where our brains don't work that way, so hmm. Um, but if you just try to make them not the same, that's something we can do. That's something that you can do. You can also choose to make them the same and they get a very toy soldiery look, but these here I'm kind of going for the a little more irregular look. I'm gonna throw a couple extra toys in the, on the table. Here's some white rocks. I might throw one or two of those in. And uh, here's a couple flat rocks. I might put a couple of those in. Again, just to make it different. I'm in the drawer here. I found a couple of big uh, darker foliage clusters. So I'm going to use one of those right now. Because it just happened to hit my, uh, hit my finger and show up. So again, this stuff takes a lot of glue. That's plenty. And then we give it a 
give it a push and absorb it like a sponge and that's going to stay. And then cluster, tuft, a tuft rather, and in it goes. So that looks pretty good. Uh, back of this needs a little something something back here and that's I think I'm gonna put one of these white rocks in here very stark but sometimes nature is unpredictable and let's go ahead and put a bush back here I do like to put these foliage clusters on the backs of the stands a lot because they get um, get beat up a little less they're a little more durable and when you handle the stands uh, when I put the cards in and out of these slots here um, I tend to handle them in the back quite a bit so that's kind of nice this uh, this unit here has uh, these two bases work nice together because it's a, a bunch of clumps of foliage uh, you know right in the middle and uh, you know it kind of looks like a scene which is nice spread them out then it's not a scene so can the elite companies will give them a, a single accoutrement each uh, see here's humans not being able to be random both those are exactly the same so I mean that's my bad in fact it's so my bad that I'm gonna I'm gonna move this one and I've got a little bit of glue there, and I'll hide that with the tiniest of foliage clumps. So, I wouldn't normally put two things on this base, but that's covering up for a past sin. Alright, some more tufts. Actually, i got more than I need here. Okay. And this guy's got a big amount of space on this side of the stand, so I think that's a good, uh, a good call for one of these white rocks. And there it is. Put it right there. Okay. So those two units. That's so decorating them takes quite a bit less time than gluing them down and flocking them, but it certainly is the part that. Gives the biggest payout. It's nothing more fun than seeing them complete. And so we didn't end up using those, but that's fine. And we used a couple of these. Actually, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put one or two of these white rocks on these back bases just to tie the two units together. Just so one doesn't look like one has it and one doesn't. So there's one for that guy. And maybe on the, well, that's a pretty busy stand. I filled these guys up pretty good. I guess the back of, oh, that one's pretty good too. I guess one's enough. We'll call it good. All right, so. Uh, I'll show those off on the camera in just a sec. I'll pull them up and you can see what they look like. So. go and not bad so there'll be pictures of these on my blog sometime in the future uh, for now I'm going to set these aside and we're going to go back to basing so I was decorating we'll go back to basing okay so back to the box of toys Ed sold me. Thank you, Ed, if you watch this. And, uh, just putting stuff back. There we go. Okay, and so now before we start, remember I said we're going to reuse that stuff. Well, some point it's got to go back in this bottle 
so I can puff it again. So I found the easiest way to do this is to jam the majority of it in by hand. Big chunks. So I tapped it all down the box. It goes pretty quick. And this step is completely worth it because this static grass is not cheap. And by the way, I, I really like this product. This is Flock and Turf from, uh, I buy it from Scenic Express, it's their brand. And this is the Farm Pasture Blend. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. It's got multiple colors of realistic looking static grass. There's no nuclear green. Um, it's got little balls of turf in there hidden in and little twigs and sticks, little tiny bits of wooden, wooden looking material. They're not, the, 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 the twigs and sticks and the wooden material and the little turf balls are not significant. They're not huge, but they're just enough to make your bases not look like putting greens. And it's a, it's a great product. I like it a lot. It, it, um, I've made a mess. Let me put this back. Um, and, uh, and then, so we've got a little bit left. And you can see, maybe you can see in here, um, you can see the little bits of stuff in these little balls here. And it makes, it's a static grass mix, and it's, it's good stuff. I like it. And so the last few bits we dig up with a pallet knife. I use this pallet knife for so many things in basing. And I don't ever use it on a pallet, but there we go. And in the last little bit, I'm just going to tilt the box into the, the bucket. Okay. And now I'm going to put that shirt box back where it was. You guys, actually today... You're actually going to just see the edge of it. So here it is right here. And uh, get to it. So next up, we're going to base some more. And I'm going to start off with, because it's fun, these artillery, these guys here. So I've got... Two nice big 12 pound guns. These look like 12 pounders compared to what I've got in my collection. Uh, and enough gunners for four bases. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to base up four bases of artillery and I will paint, uh, I'll paint two more guns for the other bases and I'll glue them on at a later date. So the key is, in fact, if these are 12 pounders, I might put three gunners per to show them off, to show that they're heavy guns. So we need a rammer, an officer of each gun, a guy to work at the trail, and uh, so, so that gun's good. Those three guys will work that gun. And a loader looks good for here. And then these are a good pair of officers for the third gun. So I'm only going to base up three stands of artillery here. And the artillery stands are a little different than the stands for infantry. They look like this. Uh, and the guns sit on them like so. And the gunners like such. In fact, uh, I don't know if I can put three guys with these big gun carriages on these 12 pounders. I don't know if they fit. It looks like they really don't. So I guess I'm going to go two per. I don't know where I would put a third figure on this gun and not have them be falling all over each other. They don't really look natural here. So I guess we'll do four. So I got to replan out what my gun crews look like. So those two guys are good. These two guys are good, and those two guys. Okay, so here's my four gun crew. One, two, three, four. Two of them will get guns now, and two of them will get guns later. Okay, uh, same deal as before. We want a little bit of glue for the figures. And we will glue the base, undo the, there we go, 
glue the base. Come out as much as I'd like. And some glue blocking the hole here. There we go. Now I'll get some glue out of this thing. Nice. Okay. So glue on the base is pretty easy. Again, the palette knife is my friend. These are for everything. It's kind of fast. I mean, you could do this with a brush, you could do this with a toothpick, but trust me, this $2 palette knife is the perfect tool for the job. And I got my old nasty brush. And I can put the guns right on. They don't need any prep. So I'll put that on, that way I'll know where I'm going. And the white glue is just enough that it will keep the figures from the guns from falling off but if someone were to really yank on a gun rather than breaking the barrel or the wheel off it'll you know because there's so little contact area it will pop the gun off the glue which is fine because I'll just put a dollop of white glue back on it for the next time and uh, good to go Sometimes, especially wargaming, I put games on at conventions and our club. And although everyone is careful with stuff, uh, typically people are well-mannered and well-intentioned. Stuff happens. And so if you design your figure, I mean, with a, with a military war game and especially a multiplayer war game, you're not always the person with handling your figures. When you're playing Warhammer, you're the only one who touches your figures. So you have a little more control as to how they're dealt with, how they're handled, and you can... You can you know if something's fragile you don't you know you don't treat it roughly, but with a multiplayer game you're not always the person handling your stuff. So there it is, and I'm gonna do this one right here so you can see the process. But then I'll push them back in the, uh, the lefty isn't my best my best hand for this. So the speed at which you puff this on really injects the hairs of that grass into the base, um, and uh, Gets it to stand up and make it make it look a little bit more like grass and less like a rug. All right, so the rest of those I'll do off camera. So we'll do the second gun. And actually, I'm having a change of heart about basing up the last two uh, bases without the guns available because how tight these bases are. So I think I'm going to, I'm just going to do the two. I'll put those gunners away until I can paint a couple guns. I've got the, I've actually got the models for them. I just have to paint them. So I'll paint a couple more models. Actually, while I'm at it, I'm probably going to paint the rest of my French artillery and I'll base all the rest of the guns up at the same time. So I guess these two guys for the heavy gun look like the, the coolest guys in the pack. So we'll drop that down in. Make sure it's contacted nice. And give this a push. So I cleaned these figures up a little bit. They had a uh, bit bounced around a little bit in the uh, packaging. Uh, they were they were based up already. Uh, it, 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 I don't know if Ed received them that way or if he based them, but they didn't match my basing uh, convention. So I'm gonna put this guy on this side so we can see his sword. Um, so I chose to unmount them, and in doing so, um, and I handled the figures and you know the bottoms of the bases. You know sometimes the the basing material gets on them. So I. Cleaned up the feet, repainted the bases green, and touched up uh, you know, any damage that was on the figures from myself or whomever had them before me. And uh, actually, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So, two more French artillery pieces. Nice, big, heavy guns. There we go. Okay, and in it goes.
Now the artillery pieces will get quite a bit of extra of the you know the tufts and grass, bigger tufts. I might you know put a little tiny piece of uh, stone wall in front of them or whatever. So these guys are going back in here for another day. And as is these two extra bases. So next up in the box of fun, we've got that's not very photogenic. Uh, we've got line battalion, and we've got Leger battalion, and a line battalion, and a line battalion, and line battalion. So one, two, three. I'm going to do the four line battalions and the rest of these will go back in here. Oh, those two guns had uh, ammunition caissons, so, or not caissons, but ammunition cases. And so I think we will we'll save those and we'll glue those on after that, uh, after that dries. So, yeah, we're going to do these one at a time. have an eagle uh, but something happened to this guy he's got some poster tack on him so it looks like ah huh, this one is another one of those conversions to an eagle bearer so Ed was doing the same thing as I was so we will we'll give this one a shot here this is more what we did the other night and we'll carve this guy, this gun off, and put a put an eagle in his hands. That looks pretty good. And then we'll touch him up and touch up the eagle. This eagle looks like it's a little bent, so we'll square that up and get that right. Here we go. So here's a trick. This is good. Uh, Good that this happened. Straightening out bent wire. So we'll pull this off for now. Actually, leave the. So this wire is all bent. And these pliers have got grooves in them. And if we put this wire in the groove and just march our way down, it's going to mess up the paint. I'm going to have to repaint that. It was already queued up. But we can do a pretty good job of using this as an anvil and a straightener by making sure that wire goes into the groove. And you can see that that's. That's significantly better, and by pinching it in those grooves, you can spin it if it's not, you know, it's not always perfect. And that's significantly better. I can look down it, and yeah, I can live with that. Okay. So we're going to do the trick here with uh, the drilling of the hand with the dull X-Acto knife that we did last night. I talked about that on the other stream. I'm just going to walk this in until I can get a hole started that won't uh, that won't run away from me. And it looks like this is gonna be fighting me a little bit, so I'm gonna give it a give it a little, little bit more carving. Get this surface a little flatter. There we go. So now if I'm real careful, I should be able to put a divot in the middle of this thing. I can grab a there we go. Okay, and that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so there's a divot there, right there in the end of that. It used to be a musket, and we're going to use our Improvised drill bit from last night, and we're just going to use the the, uh, the Dremel as a pin vise right now until I'm happy with how that's going in. And I might not actually even use it use the power at all. It gives me a lot of leverage. I actually have the back of the Dremel pushed up against my chest and I'm pushing the figure in. That's going in pretty good. I think that's actually gone in. Far enough. I'll 
try it with this and see how it goes. Yeah, I could go in a little further. I'm gonna try turning the power on. This might make a little bit of noise. It might be the there might be a mistake. Oh. Actually, I'm just gonna go by hand. I I got nervous. Last thing I want to do is power this thing on and drive it into my hand on live stream. Injure myself, make a fool of myself, and post it to YouTube. Although I guess that's what some people do. Not with miniature figures, but skateboards or whatever. All right, so this, this is running around a little bit. I'm gonna glue it down. And uh, get it stuck. There we go. That looks nicer. And it's not moving now. I got a little bit of super glue there. That'll dry nice. Okay, and so this is way out here. So I think I want to do something like that. So we'll cut him off right there. And I will hold on to the flag. So I don't shoot it across the room like I did yesterday. There we go. So we're happy with that. I like the way that looks. Again, that. Use the same trick I did last time, the wet stone that's not wet. I'm going to cut that with the pliers that left a burr on it. And I didn't really like the way that looked or went in. Okay, hey, that's pretty good. That's gonna go. All right, this musket still looks like a musket though. I'm gonna dress it up a little bit. And at least, at the very least, cut the, you know, the, the bands off it and the flintlock and trying to make it look a little more like a, something that belongs on the end of a flag and not like a, someone jammed a flag in the end of a musket uh, barrel, which is kind of silly. So this is going to involve some paint cleanup after after I do all this. There we go. That's pretty good. And this butt of this musket is uh, definitely the butt of a musket. So we're going to hopefully carve that off there. And these figures are a little softer than the ones last night. So this is actually a little easier. There we go. That uh, seems pretty good. And I like that a lot. Okay. Now I want to very quickly Oops, so we're actually going to be doing this for each of these, I guess. So, yeah. okay. Um, so, moving on, I'm going to glue this in. And because we're going to be Converting other figures. I'm gonna probably do the paint cleanup after they're based and dry um, That way I can mix all the paint once the colors up once and not Not be uh, Not be painting with all my flocking materials on the table right, So he looks pretty good Making sure the glue makes a nice fillet and fills the joint and isn't rough. And uh, there's a there's a tiny dollop. You can see the the trigger guard here. And I am going to put the tiniest dollop of super glue there. It's going to dry clear. And when I repaint it, it'll fill that uh, trigger up. Maybe it'll look a little bit more like the end of a. Thing. 
We'll also have to clean up his, his trousers. All right, so he looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with, maybe it could be a little straighter. Is that gonna hold? Yeah, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit more glue on him because not really kneeling like I wanted to. There we go. I'm just checking them to see if it sort of looks like it lines up. All right, so not bad. Looks good. Okay. So let's just double check that we've got what we need here. We've got uh, drummer, standard bearer, and uh, an officer. That's a stand. Then we've got some soldiers, and then a, a light and a gren. All right, so there's the unit. Our, our brushes sat around from when we did the artillery, so I'm just going to clean that up in a little bit of water and get it, get it open again. We still have our, our glue from the artillery. I'm just going to squeeze a little more out. And so this needs two of those, four of those, and one of those, one of those. So there we go. So let's start with the big one. Looks pretty good. All right. A couple of things happened here. One, a piece of dog hair in that. Two, I got a little bit in the slot. Well, I don't want that to bridge that slot and then not be able to get the, the labels in. So I'm probably going to put the flag bearer in the center. I don't know what's appropriate for the French army. I don't you know exactly how close to the center they were, but you know we're, we're representing 500 men with it. Eight, so I don't think it really is all that critical. So when I do my cleanup here later on, I notice that this guy's got a little shiny spot on his heel I'll fix. Probably no thanks to the way I handled them. They bounced around in this bag every time I oogled them and got excited about them. So this guy doesn't really want to stand up, so I'm going to Give his base a little bend to make sure there's plenty of glue under it. And, you know, the flag's really cranking on him, so here we go. And let's see here. A little bit of drummer action. Yeah, same thing with his shoe tops. So I'll probably hit all these guys' shoes. They've been, they've been unbased and rebased, so probably just normal wear and tear. I'm gonna make a little more room for that drummer by moving the flag over a little bit, spinning it a little bit so it doesn't stick out too far. And then this handsome officer, I like the shading on his pants is really good. I might actually have to when I paint my own copy of that. It's very, it's quite the gray is quite dark and it still looks good. It's not black lined, it's dark gray lined. And that is the treat. Look at his trousers look really nice. So I guess they're not necessarily called trousers of the French army. Whatever they're called. I'm just gonna give those guys a quick look. The spacing looks a little wonky. I'm gonna walk the flag guy back over a little bit. That'll do. A couple of the the stones I like to put on it. There we go. And give that a sprinkle with the test. Oops. Of course.
course I turned that figure just as I went to move it. All right. Now this one will be a little easier because there's no standard bearer on it. This guy with the uh, with the wound on his head, he's pretty pretty cool looking. I want to make sure he doesn't get lost, so he's not going in the middle. He's going to the end of one of the stands, so he can be seen. Excuse me. And seeing as how I want him to be seen, we'll put him here, so he's, he's kind of looking. You know, his face is more exposed from this side, so I'm going to expose more of his face. Go. Number two. And oh, I made a mess of that, didn't I? Get them kind of pointing the right way. Yeah, they look great. Happy with that. Throw some rocks in. I'm going to put a few more on this one. Try to make it a little irregular. And there we go. jam the first layer in this is just belt suspenders here all right two easy ones This guy's got some brown on his base. It's actually a good choice if you're, you know, get some patches of mud and stuff on your base. You can make your bases look really nice and interesting and not just all grass. But I tend to go with the all grass. I, I do a lot of European battlefields with all grass. Uh, so this guy doesn't want to stay up. So we're going to see what's up with him. Oh, I see. He, I didn't clean him off as well as I could have. He needs a little, little love here. So I talked about this trick the other day. There's already white glue there, so if I put a little dollop of super glue here, just the tiniest bit, the white glue will eventually hold and be able to be removed later. But this super glue ball will, it'll cure, it'll stick on, and it will secure the figure down enough that it shouldn't move too much once it, once it kicks off. says. So 
It's always worked before. Yeah, there we go. Just takes a second for it to grab. And again, there's so much white glue there that that's not going to keep you from rebasing that figure later. So. You don't want to put a ton of super glue on it, just a little dollop right in the center. Press it all the way through the white glue, and the moisture from white glue will activate that super glue pretty quick. And the super glue will it will bite to whatever's underneath the white glue if you if you put just enough on. If you put too much, it makes a mess of everything that you can't get off later. If you put too little, it will fall over. But I found that. A drop is about right. A dollop. You know, like that much. Except for making super glue, not white glue. he goes he's staying up a little better he's got a little a little tilt to him though so I'm gonna there we go give that a little bit of a little bit of encouragement there we go a couple of rocks and throw this in the back of the bin give it a push the unit down and have to do a, another conversion here on this one as careful as I can all right so not that guy and not that guy although his red pom-pom needs a little touch up uh, Actually, that's the that's the Legier. So those guys go together. Yeah. All right, and this guy is a perfect candidate for the Fanion because his gun will disappear once we uh, cut it and drill it. So I'm pretty sure my buddy Ed was probably thinking exactly that when he put this guy in the in this group. So so I'm gonna. Here's some, a little bit of stuff on this guy. I'm going to clean him up a little bit. He'll, uh, he'll get touched up too. There's a piece of old static grass there. And it wasn't from me. It wasn't from right here because it was stuck. Yeah. But... He's going to be easy to convert. We're going to just cut the, the lock off that gun. We're going to smooth it over a little bit. Cut the, the band off that gun right there. And actually, I'm going to cut the gun off that gun. I'm going to get it as deep into here as I can. I'm going to glue the, glue the fanion right in there. All right. So, yeah, that's pretty good. I think I can... This one, I don't even have to, I don't think I have to do any conversion really. I think I just cut anyway anything that doesn't look like belt and strap. Glue the, yeah, that's pretty good. I want to glue it right in there. Yeah, that actually, this has to go. Here we go. See, I'm just going to lay it in right there. The only thing I want to do is I want to make sure it's flat so it glues nice. And so I'll give that a just a little touch here. Now, if I was doing this before the figure was painted, I'd go in there and carve it out and put a real a true a true groove in there. But if I did that now, it would break all sorts of stuff. So 
Let me actually try to get uh, a hole in here. He says, if I can dig in deep enough here, I might be able to drill a little anchor point for the end of the fanion to go in. And uh, glue in. I put a little bit of stuff here, but it, all this has to be repainted, so I'm not worried about that. Touch it up a little gray. Here we go. All right, so let's see here. Got the uh, somewhere in here. Here's the cased eagle. So that's there. That's that's fine. That's it. Ah, here it is. It's in the back still. Let's say where to it go. It's right there. Okay. So need to be up over his head, something like that. Yeah. So something like that. Right there. These aren't the right pliers to do that with, though. These are the steel wire. Right. And let's see here how this looks when we put it in here. Actually, pretty good. Pretty good. Yep. All right. I'm going to. See if I can't scrape a groove in here for that to sit into and fit a little nicer. Give me a little more bonding surface. And then we'll clean this figure up. It's going to require a little bit of repainting, but it's worth it. The figure's nice. It's just going to be this area right here, and it's gray, so I think even I can pull that off if I work at it. I'm just scraping the tip of this down here to make a make a groove. Try to get all the flotsam out of here. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good groove. I'm gonna use the push this, try not to push it into my into my hand. Push it through the lead and strengthen that groove a little bit. Nice. That's working. Oh, seven. I only got about another 45 minutes and I gotta do something. All right, so let's take a look. Yeah, that looks like it's gonna be a much stronger bond with that groove. All right, give it a shot, see if we can get it to stick. You know, I'm gonna give this a little bit better of a help. This is a polished steel. I'm gonna just rough up the the part where it bonds on this stone a little bit. Just knock the shine off. It. Give that super glue something to bite to. All right, that's more than I wanted. There we go. I'm just going to hold this here with my fingernail, not my finger, so I don't glue my finger to it, just the fingernail. And there we go. And I'm going to hit this with a little bit of accelerant, and then I'm going to go back in with some more glue as a fillet. The accelerant just gets it tacked in there. And then I'm going to take a tiny bit more glue. And... So there's a little bit of coating of this, but it's not a, a glob. And I'm just going to try to run that in there on each side. That's pretty good. You know, if I was a little more clever, I would have glued this to his hat, too. Um, that would give it a little more durability. It looks like it's in there pretty good. I can bend it, so he's good.
I'm calling him done. Gonna repaint him, but repaint all the standards when we touch up the units. Okay. So, uh, back to what we were doing. So, a little bit of glue. So, two elites. These three guys. And those three guys. So, we've got two bases. Two elite stands. Um, let's start with an easy one because my nerves are a little shot from doing that carving. And then we'll see how we are. Okay. That looks good. So I realize I'm not saying too much, but then again, there's nobody out there. So the only people that are going to be hearing this are anyone who's silly enough to watch this thing on YouTube later, which is probably nobody but myself. So you don't need to hear me talk too much. I'm just going to get to it. And if I think of something cool to say, I will, but then it's a tip. So this looks good. There we go. This looks good. Now I resisted putting there's two shoulder arms and uh, I mean two uh, guys with it over far over their shoulder one holding it upright and I resist the strong urge to put the unique one in the middle that's one of those humans don't do random very well you know you want to organize it so I one way to it's a trick I heard on Mel the train true one way to make humans uh, not try to make things too organized is he had a trick where actually it's not true I think it was black magic craft so whichever one of the two of them taught me this they're both good channels so they were I think it was Mel they were carving out a stone wall and he said well if you were a regular if you're just gonna start one corner and start carving your stones out in the wall you would it look like a brick wall when you're done I said so start out and just put some larger stones you know randomly throughout the field and now when you put your little stones in you can't make it look like a brick wall because you've already messed the pattern up ahead of time you've uh you've committed uh, an act of preventative uh strategy and so that's what i did there is I, I i grabbed the unique figure and intentionally didn't put him in the middle so that i created a, a piece of intentional strategy against putting him in the middle so you know, if you're trying to do something and you don't want it to look too regular, see how you can break the combo ahead of time. You know, choose something that's out of the norm and uh, start with that. And then even if the other things are the norm, you've got something in there that's making it look random. And again, humans are sensitive to random, so or rather they see patterns. So if you've got a you know a specific thing that breaks a pattern. Your eyes will pick it out and you'll see it and you'll be like, that's not, that's not right, which is perfectly what you want. If you want random, you're like, boy, that's all messed up. That's, you know, that's, that's random, you think, but it's, it's not, it's just different. And your, your brain treats different as random. And he stands up good. I didn't really check him after I glued this standard in, so that could have caused me trouble. This guy had a little tiny chip on the bottom of his boot, and I just covered it with flock. Is that the right thing to do? 
Nope. Is it what I did? Yep. Do I feel guilty about it? Nope. Well, I'm happy. What you don't want is you don't want to bury the figures up to their knees and flock. That would be a crime to whoever painted these. It'd certainly would be a crime when I paint my own. I, when I paint my own, I'm very careful. I don't want to bury beautiful paint jobs. And you, know, you work, you do the gators and you do the... All right, so here we go. We're doing a two for two at once in this one. Here we go. And in they go. I got to talk and I didn't spray that first one. Why don't you guys tell me about that? Couldn't hear you through the through the video. Alright. Last two on this one. some extra stones I dropped. I'm just going to pitch them on this base before I put the figure on so I can get them there. It's not, a, it's not a stone, it's a little piece of wood, but it's fine. Anything that's different is fine. Breaks up the pattern of the flock. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna go heavy on the rocks on this guy. Here we go. All right, and yeah. So why that was uncoordinated as all heck. <laughs> uh, see, if anyone's watching this, they could have clipped it and made fun of me. So why good old Elmer's glue? Good old Elmer's glue because you never base things once. Someday you're going to decide, well, this isn't the rule set I like, and this is a, another thing that happens with historicals that doesn't happen with Warhammer. Is I don't like this rules. I don't want two bases and then two elites. I want all of them on one base, or I want every single figure on his own base. And uh, you're gonna rebase them. You're gonna take these, we wanna take these figures off of these bases and put them, put them on new bases. Well, if you are, just dang a little water, this glue's getting thick. If you had based these up with super glue or epoxy or, um, you know, some people use green stuff, not green stuff, but um, squadron green putty. Uh, those are all a nightmare to get uh, your figures off of. But Elmer's, you take these bases, you drop them in a tray of water overnight, and in the morning, you pull the figures off, you run them under a, a gentle stream of water, and you've got figures ready to rebase again. And uh, that is why Elmer's. Anyone that doesn't base in Elmer's glue is missing out on some significant efficiency in their rebasing. And you will rebase. Um, you just will. I don't care who you are. I don't care how loyal to your rules are. I don't care if you wrote the rules. You will rebase. All right. Our next unit has got a, a cased eagle. And... It's got uh, it's got an issue. It fell off, and so I think what I'd like to do to fix this is it's going to just keep breaking if I butt if I butt glue that. That's not a thing. So I'm going to cut a 
centimeter uh, of this shaft off. I'll lower this so I can glue it to the side of his helmet. And then it'll stick. It'll have something to bite to and it'll, it'll have a bonding area. And it'll be shorter and no one will be the wiser. Unless they watch this video and who's doing that? So, so there we go. I cut that off and you know, painting the it's gonna, this hat's got a oil cover on it, so it's going to be easy to repaint. And I'm just going to put a flat on this. And I'm going to make sure that that's, yeah, that's peeled up a little bit from being bent when it broke. So I'm just going to tighten that up. And then this cased eagle will be super glued right there, and it'll look fine. Actually, it'll look really good. I actually like that a lot, and it'll be strong. And it's done. And I keep putting that eagle right in that glue. So let's not do that. So, hmm, how do we get this glue where I want it? I guess put it on the eagle. All right, and then in it goes. So now, let's see if you can see him, yeah, and that's fine, and I'll let that set up. There's just enough glue in there that that's not going anywhere now, and it looks good. It looks natural. It's fine. I like it a lot. Again, that's another figure that will get touched up after the basing. All right, so... That, that looks like a grin. It looks like a leger or a light, yeah. So, oh, uh, look at this guy. Look at that great coat on that guy. That's a pretty figure. That is a pretty figure. And he's got a, a hood on his Chaco. That is a pretty figure. That guy's going on the right hand side of a stand so he can be shown off and seen. Actually, that's a pretty figure too. All right, and. Are fantastic. Um, make sure these are all of similar quality. They are. I just want to, if there was, you know, really nice ones, I'd want to put them on each. Oh, and I said it would hold up, but not while the glue's wet. That's unfortunate. So I guess it wasn't as strong as I thought. I'm going to put a tiny bit more on him. This time I'm going to dry the glue with some kicker because it just it wasn't set up. work good all right now I made a mess of that this is yeah I had some white glue on my hand and it gets the white glue got stuck to the fanion all right that'll clean up once I paint it Paint it black. That looks good. All right, I'm going to put a tiny bit more glue in that. Oh, there it is. In that joint between the hat and the fanion because obviously it wasn't very strong. And I'm going to repaint it black anyways, so it's all oil cloth. Here's another trick. So, thin suit CA blow it it's going to scatter everywhere but if you blow it off the model I just blew that direction it sprayed it off and now only what I needed was there so you can see it's it's fine and when I repaint that and reflat it and now I give it one more sh shot of kicker unlike the first time now it'll hold he says yeah all right so looks good that's a fancy enough figure, I think, that I will put it on the right. 
And then, good. I wanted this guy on the, the left-hand side of the stand. Here we go. Okay, good to go. This is getting to be dead. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to get some new glue. So that's going to go. Because foliage clusters and other stuff fell in there. Nice and fresh. Okay, so we need a base for him, a base for him. Base for him, a base for him. crap off with my thing and there we go and it was on there see my hands get a little covered with the white glue here but that's because the way I hold the bases sometimes I clean the glue off the edge of the base with my finger and it dries and it's not a big deal non-toxic it's I call it school glue here right for a reason because you can you shouldn't, but you can eat it. There we go. Get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so let's take this guy. Make sure he stands up. good actually that looks really good I'm liking him a lot And this is pretty good. That looks good. Put some stones on them. Good. That looks great. So my puffer bottle just ran out, so I'm going to take some more of this and put it in it. So enough of it stuck to the stands that I'm going to need some more. I could take what's in the tray and refill it, but it's not going to be enough either way. Here we go. extra figure. Three, three, one. Oh, he belongs to someone. We'll figure it out. Okay, next base. All 
already. good. That's the guy I did one on the left side, so he's on the left. Because more of his code will show. Probably flawed log logic. Maybe the, maybe the right is more better for him. But they're all, they'll have that beautiful texture, so it should be fine. A neat effect and it was done with dry brushing and it looks great I'm totally gonna to steal that idea you know you can hand highlight that kind of stuff and put them all in explicitly but when you're doing you know high volumes of figures if there is a time where a dry brushing technique works well like like in that in a great coat what I sometimes do is do that coat first I do this with chainmail uh, for sure you do the dry brushing first and don't be too worried about getting it everywhere. You can still go back in and do intentional highlighting cleanup, but then you paint the rest of the figure after you've done that first, you know, big dry brush. So the great coat or the chain mail or whatever. And, uh, you know, you can be sloppy and fast and do the whole unit fast, fast, fast. And yeah, the, the dry brush color gets everywhere. So you get silver all over your model. But if it's a medieval model with chain mail, you know, other bits are probably silver is probably a common color on other bits of it so and if it isn't you paint over it no big deal in the case of the coat I mean, this is brown and gray that you're dry brushing there those are easy zenithal undercoat colors so that's fine so that rock ended up on his toe let's give, encourage that to go someplace reasonable all right And two singles. You don't have to squeeze that glue in a square pattern, but it does slightly make your life a little easier. So I went ahead and did it. It's a little too much glue on this, so I'm going to steal some of it for the top of the figure. Stick it on the bottom and grab it there with a the brush. And this guy's foot is chipped and I am not going to bury the entire foot in flocking so I'll have to go back and give that a little touch up but that's fine. I'm going to be going over all the figures with black. Black is a, a good fix-all color. Um, you know when I'm going and patching up figures I I will often start with black because any piece of black that's got a chip out of it and showing silver shows up like a sore thumb. Um, but the other nice thing about black is hit everything else that's chipped black too because it's it's your undercoat color and it's a shadow color and sometimes that makes whatever it is that you're coating that you're hitting black whatever flaw it is that you're trying to fix disappear and you might not need the original base color it just you know you just put a shadow somewhere you know sometimes you do sometimes you gotta go back and put the right color most of the time you do but occasionally if it's someplace that's in a shadow you know while you're hitting it with black um, you know you fixed it and even if you haven't now you've you know put a, a, a layer of paint underneath there that your other paint will stick to and if it's a uh, it's a color that doesn't cover well well there's black underneath it and that's better than silver it's not going to be reflective at least you know it might be dull but it won't be reflective and that is a win uh, my uncle is always fond of saying that your eye doesn't see black and he's right you know you 
put black on something, it kind of disappears. You know, that's why it's a shadow. Your brain's kind of trained to say, well, I don't look there. And that's why, you know, in speed painting historical miniatures, a lot of people are fond of black priming and leaving a lot of that black on the figure. Uh, there we go. I'm going to put a little bit of grit right there because a little bit of grit showed up, so I'm going to go ahead and do it intentionally. Okay. That looks good. And... It looks like all the time I got for tonight. Hopefully, do it again. Thanks.